Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the Fish Locker Out in Fort Aventura. The mark that I'm fishing today is a rock mark. It's our first proper day in Fort Aventura. I'm fishing with a friend of mine called Tom. He's about 100 yards further up the way there. We arrived yesterday. We did a little tiny bit of a token effort last night just because we wanted to make the most of every opportunity. Today we are here properly. We're here, we're here to catch fish. All we're using well, all I'm using, Tom's maybe stretching things up a little bit, I'll go and speak to him in a minute. We're using bait that we bought from the supermarket. So we're using frozen pilchards and frozen squid. On one rod, I've got my rods out now. I always like to get rods set up. So I've got something fishing while I'm setting everything else up. On one rod, I've just got like a heavy pulley rig. Just the same as you'd use for like rough ground for cord, for skate, for tope. And on my other rod, I've got a scratching rig. So I'm trying to cover all bases. I'll show you the rigs and the baiting up as I bring them in. I've got um, a whole a whole frozen sardine on one. Sorry, I've just had a nod on my rod. Uh, a whole frozen sardine on one rod. When we fished last night, I did caught. Uh, oh, I'm getting a bite now. Sorry, I'm. I'm going to look at you this way. So I'm going to. When we were fishing last night, Tom caught a white skate just on the same rigs that I'm using now. So I'm, I'm planning that the pulley rig is going to be for you things like your sharks, your skate, your stingrays, your bluefish, your moray eels, anything fishing about in the area on the bottom, big predator fish. And my scratching rig is going to be catching me with different species. Now last night I caught like five different types of fish, most of them bream. So I'm hoping that my scratching rig is going to be getting me my pretty fish, my species. That's the one that usually keeps me busy while I'm waiting for a bigger fish to come on the other one. I'll show you my setups now actually, really simple, it's just there's nothing different here than what I would be using in the UK. My heavier setup it's in any fish anywhere, six and bait. And it's a fixed spool with a pen spin fisher, seven and a half thousand. And I've got 60 pound braid on there. Because this is going to be for big fish, I'm fishing it on a, an incredibly loose dragon. And the other rod, my scratching rod, is a pen tidal 420XR. And that's with a surf blaster. One's a light scratching rod and one's a heavy rod. I'm going to fish about with a scratching rod until it gets dark and I'm going to put two big baits out. It's, it's beautiful here. Temperature is about 20 degrees. And the water is a lovely shade of blue. But I will mention straight away that I am fishing on a rock mark. And it is potentially, you can see a bit of swelling. Usually I would wear a normal full life jacket. What I'm actually wearing is I'm wearing my my Alto Spinlock pack. That is a life jacket that you wear around your belt. Fingers crossed we'll be able to show you some fish. See the rod tip. I tell you what. Seems to be beating more like a flatfish species, isn't it? It's been a long time waiting for this. Yeah. 
To say I am a happy man is an understatement right now. Let's do something with this. No, it's a little bit funny. A lot less like a what's it now. Yeah, I've been sat behind these motionless rod tips for hours. Throughout daylight we were just getting pecked to pieces by little tiny fish. The baits, the, the, the frozen sardines that we're sending out were lasting minutes. You know what I mean, like a maximum of five minutes. Just setting this bait, I've just cast back out now. We've got that skate in a pool down there. So all I've done is, the baits, Baits were lasting minutes. Managed to catch one small bog. So that was bait, so we're using the last of our bait. <laughs> we were literally we were talking, we're like, how much longer should we give it? Should we give it half an hour and then we'll go for a Chinese? And then just as we'd said it, it was like, right, counting it down. I'd packed all my bag away, I packed the camera away, packed everything away. I managed to pick up, uh, that is a brilliant white skate. A male white skate. I've just, all I've done now is I've cast back out, put my baits ready. Hopefully the footage has been okay. I mean, it's shown you properly. All I'd heard was, I'd heard the drag go. It showed you that I've got my rods set and the drag is like this light, look. The reason I've got them set like that is because anything could pick this up. A shark could pick it up. Something that, something that wants to leg it could pick these up. So I'm fishing with a very light drag. And all I, all I heard was I just heard like click, 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 click. When I come down here, I, I hope we can show you. It was just, it obviously sat on the bait. The first few clicks is when it found it. It started chewing it a little bit and then it had it in its mouth and it started moving off. And what I was doing was I was waiting for that moving off. If a ray finds a bait, they can land on it and they have to position it into their mouth. And then once they've got hold of it, then they start swimming away. So I was waiting for it to, like a little, nah. I was waiting for it to start zzz, as it swam off. Then set the hook into it, played it up. Now we are in quite a deep water mark here at the minute, which is, which is perfect. That ray give, give a real good account of itself, even though it's probably only about 30 pound. There we go, we're set. Go and have a look at this fish now. Those eyes are just fantastic, aren't they? You see those holes there? Those are its gills. Never try and pick them up by those holes in there because you can damage their gills. Get it back into there. No, oh, where are you going? In all that commotion there, all I did was I just unclipped my rig, dropped him in this pole, got everything out of the way, and let him calm down. Now we've come back now, Tom's over here, we'll unhook him. Right. All I did was I just put it straight to this pole to calm down. Now, fishing with, these are J-hooks, but we've crushed down the barbs. Literally, look at, look at that. That was how easy that came out. That is a Cox and Roll meat hook in Ato, and all we've done was just crush the barb with a pair of pliers. Turn you back over. And that was a rig. Just a, just a pulley rig. A beefed up pulley rig. Come back to him in a minute and get a photo. Tom's just, we're down dealing with my fish, saw the rods just go, tripod nearly went over, so I've legged it down here and it's just hit into the fish. From oh. so my fish is a fish mate. So brain. No way. Oh. Too gill. No, too white. How have you managed that? No way, they're too stonking it white bream and all. On one hook. That one there, look. Yeah, I don't I don't even know how you've done that, but yeah, well done. If it Fant wasn't on film, you wouldn't believe Fantastic, it. Fantastic, no. It's just caught around its pecking in its mouth, hasn't it? <laughs> Greedy sod. 
Yeah, he's right. If you're on the coach on film, you'd never believe that. Oh, trying to stay out of the water. Yeah, I'd very, very nearly ended up on top of Tom inside of a rock pool. Yeah. This down here is just like the slippiest thing you've ever imagined. That one there is a stunner. In fact, it's two types of bream, I think. I think you've got a white bream and a saddle bream. We are still getting quite a lot of bites, but I reckon it's just them white bream, like, like what Tom had earlier. Because it's just not committing, they're, they're like a real aggressive and it pulls a little bit of the drag off and then just now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the, it is getting... Yeah. The tide's flooding now, we fished two hours down the low and two hours up and the tide now, because it's turning, the swell's picking up and it's slopping against these rocks, it's, it's going to start getting wet soon. So yeah, I reckon we're going to give it about half an hour and then we're going to head and go and see if we can't find, uh, find a Chinese restaurant or something like that to celebrate. I'm really happy about that, uh, that white skate. It was about 25, 26 pounds I reckon. Um, they're also called a bottle nose skate or a clear nose skate. And you'll probably see by the videos that Maybe 15 minutes, not half an hour. Day three, we're back at the same mark. Right, we've been fishing for about an hour. All we've done is we've been trying to concentrate on catching plenty of bait. Trying to catch lots of boga and lots of mullet to do us for fresh bait throughout the night and maybe tomorrow. Tom's fishing down the way out. I don't know if you've noticed, but it, this isn't supposed to be two-tone. Tom stuck out a live bog just as we were busy fishing, his rods just starched over. We've spent the past 10 minutes swimming around in rock pools and slipping about the place to land in this fish. Now I had to come down here. I hadn't set any of the cameras up or anything. We had purely been fishing for bait. We've got, this is the type of bait that we've got. And some little bog that are about five, six inches long. I'll take you down the ways now and I'll show you what Tom's caught. <laughs> it is incredible. Like kids in a candy shop when it comes to the surface. All I can say really is wow. The dorsal on it, that is just a stunning fish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Caught it on like 15 pound fluoro. Just hooked it right in the scissor at the corner of the mouth. It's an absolute miracle to land it because I don't know if you can see them teeth there. You see them? Yeah, I'll get some photos of that. But that is incredible. <laughs> we'll show you the rig for to catching that in a second when we'll have some photos. That is just an absolute brother, <laughs> Yeah, it was really easy to land, wasn't it? Well, simple. We both got soaking wet. <laughs> Ended up on our backside. Just, like looking at it from just above, it, it's just a... What a stunner. Amazing, mate. It's a the tail there at the back. Yeah. That is a cracking fish. Lovely. Just got to catch another now. Tom's just said, oh, it's going a bit slow, so I'm just going to run back to house. Just as soon as he disappeared around the corner with the car, one of my rods has just gone. And it feels like a stingray because you can see it's just stuck to the bottom. It ran off to start with and now it's just sucked itself to the seabed. Yeah, typical, wasn't it? It's just like, oh, you just watch my rods for five minutes. Just go around the corner. <laughs> Come back and we'll have done all hard work.
He's right under the overhang there, isn't he? Yeah, It's the only thing, it's similar to the skate when the water you on the back pull, it puts a lot of pressure on, doesn't it? Right here, it's got a big spinner at the back. Right, the dangerous part is that. See the size of that there, look. That barb there is that long. I'd put this fish, I don't actually, with the depth of it. Oh, he's, he's heavier than he looks. The problem with these, unlike skate, is they're just they're just floppy. You can't get you can't get a grip on them like you can with a skate. Hooks only just hooks only just in his mouth. Go up and get the T-bar and I'll pop it off. Over the widest part, it is 85 centimetres. Sucking to sucking down, so I'm going to have to do it in water. It just act like a massive suction cup on the seabed. I am over the moon with that. Let's get another bait out. There, that's the rig. Just the souped up pulley rigs. And it was a mullet fillet. Yeah, one of the mullet that we caught. Took a little bit of fillet off one side, sent it out on a pulley rig. There we go. Dead simple. I'll show you the baiting up now before I send another one out. Right, I've kind of got my life into order now. I wanted to show you this baiting up demo before the sun died off. We're just coming onto last light now and everything's kind of kicking off all at once. Um, we're fishing the same mark that we were yesterday. 
all we decided to do was we're concentrating first off in getting fresh bait because the frozen bait that we were using we were getting from the supermarkets just wasn't cutting it it was lasting minutes I had that skate on a bog that I'd caught before so all we did was we concentrated our time on catching some mullet and catching some bog while we were doing that Tom stuck out a live eight and caught an amazing bonito that was that was fantastic we, we no cameras set up or anything like that so we just scrambled about got the fish landed then I set the cameras up so we're going from there um, Tom had just disappeared to the accommodation to go and change his trousers because we got absolutely soaking wet I mean I'm I'm still ringing I'm gonna go and get changed in a minute yeah these rocks round here are just like imagine like if the floor was covered in washing up liquid that's how slippy it is that's why I've been going in bare feet just because she's, we're slipping over all the time the baiting up all these are it's just my pulley rigs just beefed up pulley rigs and that's an 8 cox and raw meat hook on 100 pound mono now all I did was one of the mullet earlier on I just cut a slither off just filleted a little bit off and all I did was I just I use mullet in the UK as bait it's, it's great it stinks and it's really really tough perfect bait congas taupe like anything like that I've caught sharks on it, I've caught ling on it, I've caught congas on it, I've caught taupe on it, I've caught all sorts. It is a brilliant, brilliant bait. And what I'm going to do is there is a little bit of an off cut of the belly of that bonito and I'm going to lash that onto my bait as well. Just because an oily, scenty bait like that is going to be amazing. Yeah. We bled off and then filleted that bonito. And just the little scraps, like the belly scraps, we're going to use as bait. Uh, that stingray there, I have caught stingrays like that in um, so I'm keeping an eye out because we've got a couple of live baits. I've got a big I've got a big bait out and I've got man and Tom's live bait rods up on that tripod behind me. So if you see him going let me know. Tom's moving all of his gear further down here. All I've done look is I've just threaded the hook through that piece of mullet and put on that piece of bonito and I'm just gonna lash it up with a bit of bait elastic. It's big baits for big fish and the main fundamental of all of this is the hook point needs to be proud I hope it showed I hope it showed effectively how well that that stingray was hooked because the skate was hooked in the bottom jaw and the ray was hooked in the top jaw perfect hookup and the way that makes sure that you get a good hookup is that your hook point is proud you can have the best bait in the world and if your hook point's not sticking out you're not going to hook the fish, are you? Right. Well, that scent coming out of that—that's going to, yeah, that's got, to, that's got to get me a fish. Served at a sushi restaurant. Now, some people just use just use circles, but I've crushed the barbs of these J's. I think for rays, you get a better hookup, you get a better bait presentation with a straight, with a J, rather than a circle, just by the way that they feed. If we were fishing for sharks and things like that, we would use circles. We're not we're fishing for other things, so I'm using J's, but we've crushed the barbs, so the hook just pops straight out. That's also, that's also kind of like a safety, a built-in safety feature because if you ever accidentally break off on a fish, like if it goes underneath a reef or if it parts you off or if anything happens and you lose a rig in a fish, if it's got a barb on it, that hook's gonna stay there. Whereas if you're using barbless or crushed barb hooks, that hook will eventually drop out when the pressure comes off. And all we're gonna do there is, I'll rig me the rod up and we'll get this bait sent out. What wouldn't want to eat that? Put this down. Got it. Well, you got it. Oh, it's the 
<laughs> Walking up. You're fighting like a rear. Wet carrier back. No wing beats though. I think it's playing a skate to get the odd. Yeah. It's just like a big wet run. That's the problem with this. Trying to navigate to somewhere where you're not gonna go straight on your backside. Oh nice rear. That is a nice big stinger. We're having to having to walk it further down to a position where we can land it. Some idea of size. That's how big it is. Them eyes are just insane, aren't they? Now these these holes in here and in here, where it breathes from. And the bait was a little bit of that bonito. Right, just hold that for a second, mate. I don't even think my tip is going to be. Might just be long enough. Tell you what, I'll go from go from one side and then just double it. Sixty-four. Sixty-four at the middle, so what's that? 128. If you wanna hold this mate, I'll go to the dangerous end. Need a longer tape measure. 158. 186. That is a big stingray. It's a female. That other that little one's a male. If you just go around the back, I'll just show you that part. Yeah, this bit here. That's the dangerous end. Sorry. It's got all spines up and down here like. And it's almost, it's in fact, see under certain underneath its tail, it's got like a fluke look. They're mad. Amazing fish, mate. Amazing fish. Get the hook out and get some photos. Definite bite. Heard the drag going from all the way over there. I was just about to say that there is like a thunder and lightning storm over on the horizon so we were contemplating that we were just going to, oh yeah well, we might have to knock it on the head because we don't want to don't want to be out here attached to carbon rods when there's a flipping lightning storm and just as I said that, both my rods have started going Right mate The rod on the right hand side, drag's been kept pulling off two or three times the one on the left keeps having like a, a proper, proper nod Yeah, it does. Yeah, now it knows.
you reckon? I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll need to. Where's yours? Is your line wrapped around the rock or something? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's around the rock. All right. Ninety-four centimeters. Down to the nose. I'll tell you what, the tail's are hell is sharp. One twenty-eight. Let's get a slip back. Uh, slipped. Completely off the bird. Too far to it. Yeah, the other rod, we missed that fish, but it managed to get itself all tangled up with the other rod. So I'm going to have to take off a length of this, retime my leader, start again. So you found a big one. Typical. I'll wait for the plane to pass. We were just down there, I'd just finished all that tangle up, finished retying them rigs, sorting out my leader, turned around, because Tom's rod just kind of went, stayed over there and went, shh, shh, shh. So I ran and got the camera, he's run down and struck into the fizz. And, you are. Could be anything. A lot of drag on there, how is it? On this one. Wow. Wow. That is a big one. That is a very, very big one. Um, I don't exactly know what we're going to do with this one. That is flipping huge, mate. Your back knows about it. There we go. Oh no. I'm gonna pop away. We've just decided that we're gonna pack down and I left one rod out. Literally maybe five minutes from packing this rod away. Just screamed off, that was a proper run. It was it was on and it was gone. Might be able to just glove that straight up onto this ledge, get it unhooked and get it sent back. Pretty small, but it's got an attitude. Yeah. There you go, mate. Right, we're almost finished backing down. The pulley rigs, leads, bait. All we'll do is we'll take everything up to the van, we'll come back down and have a scour about, make sure that there's no line or bits of plastic or anything else. Always try and make sure that you leave a place tidier than what you found it. 
Now, the reels are pen spin fishers, they've been absolutely nailing this. And these, any fish anywhere, six and baits. Yeah. Well, what better recommendation do you need than that we've had? Um, I've had I've had two round stingrays and I've had one white skate. We've had four stingrays, one skate, uh, that Bonito, and probably a hundred little bog and bream and bits and pieces. We're absolutely beat, we're knackered. I mean I've this headlamp, I've obviously got my headlamp on too tight because I've started getting a headache. I will link bits of information into the description of this video. Um, we did a little bit of research at the digs before we came here. We've had we've had a gent a Welsh guy that's met us a couple of times on this mark and he's been invaluable. But also um, we searched around supermarkets everywhere to try and find fresh bait. GSP Sea Fishing YouTube channel. Yeah. I uh, managed to find his YouTube video and it was really helpful because he's got a video showing you where all the tackle shops are and where all the supermarkets are to get fresh fish. Thank you for that. All the very best. See you later.